In this editing tutorial, I will show you how to edit in DaVinci Resolve. I will show you all the things that is key for you to know in order to create basic videos on your own. I will try not to overcomplicate things, so we will not get into the color and fusion page in this video, as this is more the next level stuff. And before that, we need a strong foundation in order to create and finish smooth videos in an effective way. This is how the video is structured. We will start with importing the media into DaVinci Resolve and I will show you an easy and effective way to do this. Then we will move on to the edit page. We will cut up the video, add effects and I will show you how the tools and stuff inside the edit page works. Then we will move on to the deliver page and here we will export the video out of DaVinci Resolve. This is a fairly long tutorial and I will be explaining everything as clearly as I can so even the complete beginner can watch and finish it. So if you already have some experience you may consider playing at double speed or if you for example know how to trim and cut you could just jump forward to where we start applying effects and such. But I am showing you quite a bunch of different methods to trim and cut, so even if you're not a complete beginner, you may still learn something from it. So throughout each of the steps in this video, we're going to work with the same video clips. So in the end of the video, we will have a finished product, and it's going to look like this. If you want to make this video as well and edit along with this video, which I highly recommend, especially if you're new to the whole editing stuff, you can download the clips we're going to use from Dropbox. So just go to the link in the description of this video, which will lead you to Dropbox and you can download them from there. Just locate the download sign. Most likely Dropbox will ask you to register on their site, but this is not a must, so just press no thank you or something if you don't want to. And from there I will show you how to get the clips into DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so if you decided to download the example clips, we're just gonna now relocate them to a better location. So you will find them at downloads at your computer. And from here, choose a driver you want to save them on. I only have one option here since I'm at my laptop. And then create a new folder and call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine Exotic Film and drag the clips from downloads to the new folder. And since this is a compressed file, we will have to extract it to see our uh, videos. So go to extract all, make sure that the link is correct, it's the correct folder, here in my case it's exotic film, and then press extract. And once that is done, you will see the folders with the clips in. So I really recommend gather all your clips in one folder when you're gonna add it. If you not do it, it will easily get to a mess. Okay, but let's get to importing the videos to Resolve. Once you have started DaVinci Resolve, this is what you will be facing. This here is called the Project Manager, and here you will find all your projects after you have saved them. And to open a project, you can just double click on the thumbnail. But we're gonna go ahead and create a new project. So click on the button that says New Project, and then type in what you want it to be named. And then go ahead and click on create. Now we're inside our new project. And from here we can go to the right corner here and click on the home button to open the project manager from inside here. And you can also just click on the different thumbnails 
to switch in between projects and also you can create a new project from inside it. And before we start to import and edit our video, I just want to show you something that will spare you from a lot of frustration. So if you go up here in the corner and click on DaVinci Resolve, then go to Preferences and change from System to User, then Project Save and Load. And then here under Save Settings, you want to make sure that the Live Save is enabled. What this will do is that it will automatically save your project after every adjustment and change you make to it. So if the program or your PC were to crash and you have not manually saved it, then this can be a real lifesaver. So make sure that the live save is enabled and then go ahead and click save. But just because you have enabled the live save, doesn't mean that you don't want to manually save your project. This is because the live save is only a backup solution and if the live save were to fail you and you have not manually saved it, then you will just lose all you have done. So how do you manually save? You can go to file and click on save project or you can use the shortcut control s or on a mac command s. And a good indication that it's time to manually save is by looking here on the right side of your project's name. This text here that says edited will turn yellow and then red when it's a long time since you have manually saved your project. And with that out of the way, let's import our media. Okay, first I want to show you something with the frame rate. So to check the frame rate of our project, we will go to project settings. So click on this gear icon down in the right corner here or you can go to file and then to project settings from here. And under master settings we will see something called timeline frame rate and playback frame rate and that these two is set to 24 frames per second. And if you're not familiar with frame rate or frames per second a video consists of just many pictures being played after one another real fast and the 24 frames per second means that it's 24 pictures being played after one another each second. And we want this number to match the frame rate of the video clips we're gonna import. So if we go to the folder with our clips, the exotic film, and then if you click on, right click on one of your clips, properties, details, we can see that it stands 29.97 frames per second. So this does not match with our project's uh, frames per second. So to fix this, we can either just manually change it here to what we want it to be, or I will show you a much easier way. So now we will have to import our video clips into DaVinci Resolve. So I usually start in the edit page, then I make sure that the media pool is open. If it looks like this, you can just click and close as you want. Then we're gonna go to our video clips on our PC. So this is the exotic film folder uh, with all our clips in. Then to import, we will just grab and drag it into the media pool. And don't drop it in this section, you want to drop it in this sidebar since it's a folder with many clips. So under the master here in the sidebar, we're gonna drop it. And then we get the question if we want to match the project frame rate with the frame rate of the video clips we are importing. So this is great. So we're just gonna click on change. Now, it's, now they are imported to Resolve and if we go to project settings once more We can see that it's no longer 24 frames per second, but 29.97 Which is the same frame rate as the video clips we imported. So now they're matched So this is the way I usually change the frame rate since it's so easy and also when we imported these this, uh, video clips, you can see that we still have our folders. And this is because we dragged the folder into the sidebar. 
So if we had dropped the folder here in this section, the folders would not have been uh, imported to resolve as well. So now all our video clips are imported. And the media pool is where you will find everything when you need it. So let's start editing. So when you start to edit, you may experience some lag or choppiness in your playback. And therefore I will now share with you three methods you can use to fix this problem. This may seem a bit intimidating, so I don't want you to apply them now. Instead, just watch through these three methods and then know that you have a solution if you have too much lag when you start to edit. So just watch through it and after that we will start to edit. And if you then start to lag or have too much choppiness, then come back to this part of the video and try out these three methods. So the first and easiest way to prevent this is to just go to playback, proxy mode and then choose half resolution or quarter resolution. What this will do is just lower the resolution of the video you are watching while editing. The second thing you can do is to create optimized media. And then you're just changing the format of our video clips into a format that is easier for our PC to play. So before we start to create optimized media, we're just going to go over the settings of it. So go to file and then to project settings. Make sure that you're at the master settings and then locate the optimized media and render cache. The first thing you will see is the optimized media resolution. So the lower you have this, the easier it will be to play back, but the worse it will look in the viewer. Then it's the optimized media format. So this is the format we are transcoding our video clips into. And here you have a bunch of options, but I found that DNXHRSQ is a pretty good format to choose. So set these two to the same and then go ahead and hit save. And once we have the settings ready, we want to choose the clips we want to create optimized media for. So I'm going to select this folder. I'm going to hit hold down control and hit the 4K folder as we can watch all our clips at the same time. Then click and drag over all our clips. Right click and go to generate optimized media. Then, once this is done, the optimized media has been created. And the next thing you want to do is to just go to the playback and make sure the use optimized media, if available, is checked. If this is not checked, you're still using your original clips. The third way to prevent lag is to use render cache. So, to do this, go to playback, go to render cache and make sure the user is checked. Then I'm just going to add these clips to show you how it works. So if you want to render all these clips, we can just click, hold and drag over them. Right click and then you want to click on render cache color output. And then you will get this red bar and this bar will turn blue once they are rendered. Okay, so now it's time to start editing. And the first thing we're going to start with is the music. So we're going to add the music and later on we can just position our video clips after the rhythm and the music so it will be very nice transitions. So to find our music go to the music folder here, double click and then grab the song and just drag it into the timeline down here. Then position it all the way to the beginning here. And you can see it was created a new audio track called A1 or Audio. One. So the next thing we're going to do is to just change how this uh, audio track looks. As you can see now the audio track is just filling half the track. And uh, I don't think it looks like this as uh, or by default either. So we will go to this timeline view option here. Click on it. And then if you click go to audio view options. We're going to select this middle symbol here with the arrow pointing down. Then the audio wave will fill the whole thing. And if you want to have it like mine where it's on both sides, you click on the left icon here. So, like this. 
And we can also make it bigger or change the height if we go to track height, audio, and then we can drag it like this to make it even more visible. And if you want uh, to zoom in on it to make it even more visible, we will go to this uh, thing here and we will hit the plus sign. So if we hit the plus a couple of times, we're zooming in. I'm gonna zoom out one time. Or the shortcut for this, you can press Ctrl plus or Ctrl minus to zoom out. Or on a Mac, it will be Command plus and Command minus. Then we want to make sure that the audio level is okay. So we don't want the volume to be too low or too loud. If the volume goes above zero decibels, we will create or get something called audio distortion. And if you get audio distortion, the whole thing will just sound terrible. So to make sure we don't get this, we will open the mixer. So go to the mixer in the right upper corner here and it will pop on up down here. And you can see we have the A1 track, which is this track we have added the music to, which is A1 here as well. And also you have the M1, which is the master. So if you have two music tracks, so if you have an A1 and A2, both of these would be gathered in the M1. So the M1, the master, measure the volume of the final product. So this is the one we will check uh, if it's okay. So if we go ahead and play our music down here, we will uh, watch the mixer and we want to make sure that this meter here is not measuring the volume above the zero sign here, so zero decibels. If it goes above, this red box will turn red and we will have audio distortion. So let's just play our uh, audio and make sure it's okay. Okay, so you can see we have audio distortion error. The box is red and it was hitting the roof. So to fix this, we will have to lower the volume a little bit. So to lower, lower the volume, we could either drag this thing down or we can go to the audio track. And you can see there is a line running across the track here. So if you point your cursor here or here, you can see it. The cursor will change to two triangles. And then you just click hold and we're gonna lower it down. So if we lower it by 4 decibels maybe, we can try again. So watch the mixer. Yeah, you can see now it's hitting minus 3 decibels, which is a good level. So depending on what you're making your video for, if you're gonna upload it to YouTube, you want your the highest part of the music to be as close to zero as possible without peaking and getting audio distortion. So the most important thing is to don't get audio distortion and you want to be able to hear the song. Okay, next we want to add the video on top of the music. So we're gonna go to the folder here with called 1080. You can see that we have two folders with the video clips. This is just two folders with different resolutions, which we will, we will come back to later. So go to the 1080 and we're gonna start with the clip called Wave. Then double click it and it will pop up in this viewer here. Um, Resolve actually has uh, the opportunity to have two viewers. So to enable this, we will go to these two squares here. I don't know what it is by default, but we want to have two viewers. Then you will have uh, the wave clip in the left viewer here. So the left viewer is called the source viewer. This viewer is dedicated only to the media pool. So if you want to preview the clips or pictures or whatever before adding them to the timeline, you can watch them here. And on the right we have the timeline viewer, which is where we will watch the timeline. So when we have edited uh, some clips, we can watch it through in uh, this viewer here. Okay, so first we're gonna go through this clip before we add it to the timeline. So to go through it we can just drag and go fast through it like this. We can click on the play button here and the pause button like this or we could hit space 
and it's space to pores. Or the most effective way is to use the keyboard shortcuts J, K and L. So if you press uh, L on your keyboard it will start to play. And if you hit K it will stop and if you hit J it will go backwards and K to stop again. And if we want to go fast through our clip we can hit L two times and then we will double the speed. And if we hit L again, we will double the speed one more time. And if we hit K, it will stop immediately, even at double speed. And the same goes for the J. So, if we hit J two times, we will go backwards in double speed. And hit K, it stops immediately. So, before adding the clip to the timeline, we're just gonna go through it fast to see how it is. So we can see that the camera angle is changing throughout the clip. And this is something we're gonna take advantage of. So I only want one camera angle uh, to be added to the timeline. I don't want the change to happen in the video. So I'm gonna go to this camera angle here and I'm gonna set an input. So I'm gonna press I and I'm gonna press L to play a little. And then we can play to where it change angle, so here. And then to go to the point right before it changes the angle, we can use the arrow keys on the keyboard. So I will go to the left with the arrow and just go frame by frame until it changes there. So here is the point it change, and then I will set an out point here. So I will press O on the keyboard. And then we have an input and an output, and the part in between them is the part we now can add to our timeline. So to add it to the timeline, we can just drag it in, click and drag it into the timeline. But now you can see we have uh, audio on the clip as well, which is overwriting the music, which we don't want. So instead, you can see we have these two icons here with a tape and the other one which is audio wave so to only add the video without the audio we can just grab the tape here and drag it into the timeline like this and now we can see that we have only added the parts in between our in and output so only this camera angle here and now we want to position our clip uh, to the rhythm in the music. So to figure out where we want it, we will just have to play through the music a couple of times. So to play in the timeline, you could use this play button under the timeline viewer. Just hit play and stop like that. You could use the space bar and you can use the J, K and L here as well. But this time I'm just gonna go with the space. So notice that while you're playing in the timeline, that this red arrow is moving across the timeline. So this is called the timeline cursor. And this points at where you are in time in the timeline. So you can see now we are at 2 seconds in this timer here. And if we drag it to 5 seconds, you can see this is where our clip starts. So now let's find out where we want to add our clip. So we're gonna go to the start and we're just gonna listen to our song here. So I'm gonna hit space. Okay, so that's where I want the clip to start. After that second note, but done. So if we go through it once more here. There. So I'll go a couple of frames back here. And then I use my arrow keys to the left. And now if we grab our clip and move it towards our timeline cursor, the red cursor here. You can see that it snaps to it when you get close to it. So this is when you have the magnet here enabled. And this is called snapping. So if we were to turn this off and then we move towards the timeline cursor. You can see that we just move through it, then the snapping is not activated. So if we go ahead and enable it again, and then move towards it, we snap exactly where we want our clip to start. So if we go ahead and play it now. Yeah. 
that's pretty nice. And now let's figure out where we want our clip to end and the next clip to start. So if we go to the beginning of our clip and then we just listen through where we want it to end. Okay, so that's where I want our clip, next clip to start at the second. Dun dun dun. So we have to figure out where that was. So at the start of that one. So right there. And I will go a few frames back since I was a little slow to pause. So I will use my arrow keys and go to the left. I will hit two times. And one more. And once we have figured out that point, I want to split this clip in half so we can delete the second half that we don't need. And to do this, we will use the blade tool. So if we go to this blade here, or you could hit B, shortcut B, you will enable the blade. And then move your cursor over the clip and you can see the blade tool is active. So go towards the timeline cursor and it will snap to the timeline cursor here as well. So you don't have to aim for the timeline cursor, cursor to hit it perfectly. So you can see I'm just, I'm pretty far away and if I hit uh, left click now, you can see that we cut exactly where the timeline cursor is placed. Then I will go to the arrow again to selection mode. So you can press click on this or you can hit a for arrow. Then we will select this second half and we will hit the backspace at our keyboard. So hit backspace to delete it. And then it should be pretty nice. Yeah. Okay, so let's add our next clip to the timeline. So we're gonna go to the 1080 folder. We're gonna double click the marine clip here and then just go through it to see how it is. And we can see it's pretty much the same throughout. So I'm just gonna go to the start, press I for in point, play a little, and press O for out point. Then when hovering over the source viewer, we can see there is no icons appearing down here, which means this clip has no audio, so we don't have to worry about this this time. So we can just grab the frame and drag it into the timeline or we can do it another way, which I will show you now. So grab the frame and now we'll actually drag it into the timeline viewer here and we will get a bunch of options to choose from. So we're gonna go to append it at end and drop at this one. And now it will automatically get added behind the last clip in the timeline. So this is really great when you have a bunch of clips so you don't have to navigate to the last clip. And now let's position our clip with the music. So we're just gonna listen through it. And that's where I want our next clip to start. So if we zoom in, press Ctrl plus, and we play it one more time. We can see where the dun 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 is starting. There is a slight bump in the audio wave. So to see it clearly, we can change the height by just going with our cursor here and stretching down. And if we play now, we can see there was a slight bump here. So if we go ahead and place our timeline cursor right at that point, we can now grab the edge of our clip here and just stretch it to the timeline cursor and it will snap in place. So now we have positioned it precisely where the next tone is starting. So if we play a place to listen. That's uh, perfect. Okay, so let's add another clip. And this time we're gonna go to the media pool and choose the folder called 4K. We're gonna choose the ocean clip and we can go through it to see how it is. Uh, it's pretty much the same. So we will set an in point in the start, play a little and press O for out point. Then we can see that we have these two symbols back, which means this clip has audio. So we will have to grab only the tape icon when adding to the timeline. But in this example, we're gonna add it to the timeline in a different method, 
once again just to show you all the opportunities we have. So I'm gonna drag down this marine clip just for the example and we're gonna place this ocean clip in between these two. So to do this you want to place the timeline cursor where you want the ocean clip to be added which is in between these two in this case and we're gonna drag it over to the timeline viewer and then drop it at insert and now it's been inserted exactly between these two clips the only problem now is that we also have inserted it in between the audio and it's been pushed to the side as well so to prevent this we can do it in two ways so we will go ahead and undo this and to undo you press Control Z or Command Z on a Mac and now go to the audio track here and we will disable this sign here and if we go ahead and insert one more time the audio stays uh, unaffected the second method you can do it is to activate this again and we can just lock the entire track and this way you can't do anything to the audio at all so we can't move it we can't cut it or anything which is great if you're happy with how the audio is and if we go ahead and insert our clip now it stays unchanged so which method you choose is just about preference and your situation and stuff okay so now we'll have to position this clip as well so if we listen to the music one time here That's where we want our clip to end. So if we zoom in to see the audio wave a bit clearer, and then play one more time. A bit of lag here. You can see that this bump is where our tone is being played. So position your timeline cursor there. And if we now go ahead and pull our clip towards it, it will snap in place. The only problem now is that we have a neighbor clip to take into consideration. So you can see while we are expanding this clip, we're actually just trimming down the other clip, which is something we don't want to do. So if we undo this, and to fix this, we will change from this arrow being red, to change into trim edit mode. So click on this, or press shortcut T, and if we now go ahead and do the same thing, you can see that instead of covering or overwriting the neighbor clip, we're now just pushing it away and keeping it unchanged. And we also will snap in place where the timeline cursor stood before it uh, was being pushed away, which is a really cool feature. So by using the trim mode, you can spare a lot of time. But let's get back and make this arrow red again, the selection mode. And then we can just trim down this clip here as well to the music. So if we listen to the music one time here. That's where I want this clip to end. And you can see in the audio wave that there is a clear pattern where this uh, part of the music occurs. So we just place our timeline cursor here. And then we could just pull it down and it would snap in place. But I just want to show you another way you could do it as well. This is called the trim end. So I will show you the shortcut here at the screen. And if you press this, make sure that you have this clip you want to trim selected. And then press trim end. And you will just cut off the tail like that. Where the timeline cursor is placed. This can be a really effective tool when you want to just add it fast through a video and do a lot of rough cuts. You can also use the trim start, so if we just wanted this part after the timeline cursor of the clip, we could press trim start, and then we will cut off the first part. Okay, so now we're at a bit more interesting part in the editing process. So if we listen to the music, you will understand why. You can hear now that there is a lot more juice to the song, so we're gonna spice up the editing a little bit. So instead of having three of those tones we have been editing to now, I want that each of the dun dun dun, it's to be a different video clip. 
uh, or a different camera angle in our case. So we're gonna go to the 1080 folder and we're gonna use the first clip we added to our timeline. You remember this clip had multiple camera angles which is what we will uh, change on these tones. So use the different camera angles. And we have used this first camera angle and we have set an out point here at the last frame. So we can just go one frame forward, press I, and then we can use the second camera angle like this. We only need a little bit of the clip here, so maybe that much. Grab it to the timeline and then go forward, next camera angle, press I, press O, drag tape down and then we want one more camera angle like this. Okay, so now that we have three camera angles we want to uh, adjust them to the music here. So if we zoom a little bit in and then play through. Okay, so our second note is here somewhere. So if we go to trim mode to make the other clips follow when we are trimming down. Like this. And if we play now. Okay. And we can see that the last note is in this bump here. So we just place our timeline cursor right there. And then we just trim down this clip as well. And now we can play through. So that's pretty nice. And this last clip will have to be a bit longer. So at this bump here is our next tone. So just drag it towards it and it will snap in place. Okay, and the next clip, we're actually gonna use this marine clip once again in the 1080 folder. And we can just go a little bit forward, press an in point here, and an out point, and add it to our timeline like this, and find out where the note is. So, at this bump here, we want it to end, so trim it down. Then grab the water clip here, uh, set an in point, play a little and set an out point and then drag it into the timeline. And let's play through here as well. And here you can see very the clearly where we want it to end, which is this high uh, waveform in our audio wave. So place the timeline cursor there and then just trim down. So let's play through it once here. Okay, so that's pretty nice. So that's it with trimming the videos. Now we just want to add some effects and transitions and some text and then the video is good to go. Hello, this is Jens from the future. I managed to delete this clip from the tutorial so I had to come back to re-record it. So you can think of me as Jens uh, version 2.0. But, as I was saying while fi filming this the first time, is that we're now done with the trimming part of our uh, editing process. So now it's more the fun part where we're going to add effects and make the video a lot more interesting. So just ignore what we have in the timeline here, because this is what you're going to do now later in the tutorial. I'm just gonna show you how to make an intro here, which you can see is missing. So. When we are done adding clips to our timeline and trimming down and everything, we can now just go ahead and close the media pool. We don't need that anymore. And also, we don't need this source monitor anymore, since we're not going to use the media pool. So, go up here in the corner and click on this square, as we, don't, as we just need one viewer from now, and, this, and we're going to watch the timeline. Let's begin making our intro. So we're gonna make a text intro, really simple, and I'm gonna show you how to do it now. And to add text, we will go to the effects library here on the right side of the media pool. We will expand the toolbox, go to titles, and then to text. 
Make sure you don't take the tax plus, we only want the plane taxed. So grab the tax and drag it into the timeline. You can see that the tax is a little bit too wide to fit in between here. So we're just gonna place it in track 2 and then we're gonna trim it down until it snaps in place. And you can see it snaps nicely to the clip in track 1. And then we can just grab it and drag it in between now that it fits. And it will also snap in place here as long as you have the uh, magnet enabled. And now go ahead and move the timeline cursor over the text to see how it looks like. So now it only says title and to adjust this we will double click on the template and then the inspector will automatically open. To in expand the inspector click on this arrow here. And you can see in the inspector we have a bunch of options so you can make the text however you like. But we're gonna keep this simple and we're just gonna change what it says. So go to rich text and in this box you can write whatever you want the intro to say. And you can also you can change uh, the font, font, make it bold, color, size if you just want to change the basics now. Uh, now let's go ahead and close the inspector and if we play through it we can see that it still is pretty boring. So instead of just having this uh, still text we want to make some movement to make it more interesting. And to do this we will add a video transition. So go to effects library, go to toolbox and then to video transitions. And then we're gonna drag this or use this blur dissolve. So click, hold and drag it into our text template like this. And if we go ahead and play now, we can see that we get a much uh, more interesting intro from the text and into our video. The only problem now is that I don't want uh, the video to start before it should, since we have timed our video to start in the rhythm of the music. So I only want the text to blur and not the video. I want the video to punch in. So to fix this we will just have to uh, delete this uh, transition here and then we're gonna uh, set our text template to track 2 and if we now drag our blur dissolve onto our text and play we can see that it only affects the text and then we have the blur dissolve on the text and also we get the punch in with the video since the video is not affected. Remember it's a video transition so this is something used between two clips and will automatically affect the clip, the neighbor clip. And since we have moved our uh, template to track 2 there is no neighbor clip it can affect. And if you want to adjust on the effect or the video transition you just move your cursor over the uh, template where the transition is and you will get this, these two arrows then you double click and it will automatically open the inspector which is for the video transition. So here you can change the length, frames and whatever you like. We're just gonna leave it like this, close the inspector and instead just change the duration in a much simpler way. So move your cursor over the edge as we did and then just drag to change the duration like this. So I want to match the blurring on the text with the hissing in the music. So when the hissing in the music starts, I also want the text to start blurring to make this cool effect. So we're just gonna listen to our audio, put on the headset here, and we're gonna find where the hissing starts. So it's about here, and then we just grab it like this, and it snaps in place with the timeline cursor. And if we play through it now, We can see that we have a cool hiss blur effect. Okay, so that's it and over to the previous version of Jens. And you can see we have a lot of different transitions here to choose from. So you could just play around and figure out which one you like. But I'm gonna use this cross dissolve for the next clip here. To make a more smooth. 
smooth transition like this. And if you want to add transitions in between all the clips, you could just play around with it. But I'm gonna move forward to the next step now. So now we're gonna animate movement to our videos. So since these videos are shot in a pretty static way, we're actually gonna make it look like they were shot while moving the camera and creating this panning effect. So to do this, we will have to use keyframes and then change the position of the video. And I will show you how now. So we will start with this first clip in the timeline. So make sure it's selected and you will have this red border around which indicates this is the selected clip and then go to the inspector and then the inspector will be for the selected clip. And in the inspector we're gonna use the tab called transform. And transform has to do with the position of the frame. So if we change position of the frame you can see it moves around inside it. So to undo anything you do, so if you do anything wrong inside the inspector you can just click on this uh, circle here and you will undo that value. Or you can click on this if you want to reset all of the things inside the transform. And you can see that all of these different zoom, position, rotation and everything has this square on the right side or this little diamond icon. And this is what you're going to click on to activate the keyframe. And I'm going to show you how the keyframes work now later on. But first, to change the position or zoom or anything, you just hover your mouse over these numbers and it will change to these two arrows. Then you can just click, hold and drag to either side to move it upwards or downwards. And what we are going to do is to make our video move. So it's going to start here and it's going to move upwards like this and making it look like the camera is actually moving. So we want it to start down here. So we will set a start point here. And by the end of the clip, we'll set an end point here. So true. So it will go from the start point and to the end point by the end of the video. And it will pan nicely upwards like this. And the start point is the keyframe. So we will create a keyframe for the start point and we'll cre create a key point for the end frame. So to activate these keyframes or the start point and end point, we want to make sure that we have the timeline cursor placed at the beginning of the clip, which is where we want the start point. So we're at the beginning of our video clip. We're going to move the position, the y-axis, down to where we want it to start, so right around here. Then we're going to create a keyframe or start point. So here it's going to start. And then we will create an end point. And to do this, we will have to move our timeline cursor to the end of our video clip, where we will create an end point. So, we're now at the end of the video, so the timeline cursor is placed here. Then we will move our frame upwards to where we want it to end. So we want it to end like this. And you can see that the keyframe now turned red. And this is because you, don't, you only have to click on the keyframe once. And then it will automatically set an end point when you move it again. But once you're at a new video clip, so once we're at this ocean clip, then we will have to click on the keyframe again. But we're on this selected clip and you only have to press keyframe once. And when you change the position again, it will create a new keyframe point there or an end point, which is where it's going to move from, so it will move from the first keyframe to the next keyframe. So a start and an end point. So if we now go ahead and play through our clip, we can see how it looks like. We can now see it's panning nicely upwards. The only problem is that it doesn't look like it's being panned. It only looks like there is a picture being moved across the screen. So to fix this, we will add something called black bars or leather boxing. 
So you know every cinematic film have these black bars on the top and the bottom and this is what we will use to hide these uh, black edges. So if we go to timeline in the top bar here and then we go down to output blanking and choose the 235 which is the value most uh, cinemas use and therefore this is the right size and making it look like it's from the cinema. So now we have this cinematic look and if we go ahead and play through it now we can see it looks a lot better and not just a video being pushed across the screen like it did before. And now we will have to do the same thing to all the other clips as well. So we will go to the marine clip and if you move your timeline cursor to in between them, you will automatically snap to the first frame or the start frame on that, of that video. So it's always the clip to the right and the first frame of it. So we can just drag it like this and now we're, we know we're at the first frame and we can set a good keyframe from here. So make sure that we select the clip before setting keyframes, if not we will interfere and uh, ruin this last clip, so always uh, double check that you have the right clip selected. Then instead of moving upwards, we're going to move downwards to make it more interesting. So we're gonna just move our y-axis to the top, which is where we wanted to start. So we can now just move it until we can see it be, uh, being hide behind the black bar. So if we place it right there, we can see it's starting. We can set a keyframe here. We will go to the last frame here, go one back since we always snaps to the clip to the right. Then we will move our clip downwards until we can see that it's uh, getting out of the black bar. So right before that point. So about there. And if we go ahead and play through it now, we're moving downwards. So when you get the hang of this, you can do it really quickly. Okay, so let's go to the next clip. And uh, since we already have used the upward panning and downward panning, instead of repeating this process, and it would be a bit boring maybe, instead we can pan to the sides to keep it interesting. So make sure the next clip is selected. The only problem now, if we take the position X here, we can see that we're now getting these, X, uh, these edge, black edges again. And the cinematic bars isn't helping us anymore. And this is the reason this is a 4K clip. So we're working on a 1920 by 1080 timeline, uh, which means it's full HD, but this is a 4K clip. And this means that we can zoom in on it without losing quality. So, when you have a 4K clip in a 1084 uh, timeline, it will be uh, downscaled to 1080, but if you zoom into it, it won't zoom into the 1080 version of it, it will zoom into the 4K version of it, and then make the zoom to 1080. So, the most important thing to understand with this is that we can zoom quite a lot without losing quality. So, if we zoom in a little, we just zoom in like this, and now we don't have to make keyframes, because we want this zoom to be permanent. And then we can change the Y position to where it looks nice. We want the uh, ocean to fill two thirds of it like this. It looks pretty decent. But we can see that it also is shot in a bit bad angle. So if we go ahead and go to the rotation angle, we can just adjust it like this and creating a straight line. Maybe a bit back like this. And now we can see that this line here is pretty straight in our image. So if we now go ahead and move our position on the X axis, we can see that we can pan quite a lot without getting these uh, black edges. So if we start here, on this side where these nice stones are, we can set a keyframe on this point in the start of our clip and then we go to the end, go one frame back and then we can 
pan, remember this time the x-axis, to a nice point as we get a little bit of movement. But we don't want too much because this is a cinematic video and we don't want it to suddenly woof, go over the screen. So just pan nicely and slowly over the screen. So if we go ahead and test it, we can see it looks pretty nice. It's a bit of lag, this is because I didn't optimize or anything. Okay, so on this next clip, instead of just panning the other way, we're gonna go ahead and make a gradually zoom in. So, since this is also a 4K footage, we can zoom in a little bit without losing the quality. So, to do this, we will select the clip, make sure we're at the first frame of it. Then, go to Zoom under Transform, set a keyframe. And don't uh, touch the zoom at all. So we want to start in this zoom. And then we will go to the last frame of our clip. And then we will just zoom in a little bit like this, which is where we want it to end. And of course, you always get automatically a new keyframe while you have set the first one. So if we go ahead and test it now. You can see that we are nicely just zooming gradually in with a bit of lag. Okay, so already we have made this video a lot more interesting than just those static uh, films. And these next clips, since they are already moving in the video, we don't have to do anything with them. And these two clips are that short that I don't uh, border with actually keyframing these as well. Okay, so... We will zoom out once, and now we will want to make a outro. And to make a outro to our video, we will use a text title here as well, since we also have started our intro with text. So we will go to the effects library, we will go to titles, text, grab it and drag it to our timeline, to the last frame here. Then double click on it to open inspector, and we will call it video with Jens. And then we have a nice ending, just suddenly over to video with Jens. So let's just figure out how long we want it to last, the outro. So if we use our headset now and listen, let's close the inspector. Okay, so I want it to end here, so then we can just use the uh, trim end here and cut off the tail. And also, we want to end the music here as well. So we can split it in half and do just delete this second half. And then, instead of having this uh, music just suddenly stopping, we can fade it out and make a more smooth ending of the music. So, if you hover your mouse over the audio track, you can see that you get this white dot here. And if you move your cursor all over it, you will get these two triangles. So just click hold and you can just push pull it to the side like this and it will create a gradually ending. So it will go from full volume and just turn gradually downward until it stops. And if you want to curve it as it goes in a little different tempo when it gradually goes out, just grab this uh, dot here and move it upwards like this. And if we play through our end now, it should be pretty smooth. Yes, so that's pretty nice. And once that is done, congratulations! We're now finished with the editing part of this tutorial. So now it's just to go over the export settings and then we're finished with our video. So, by now you should have a pretty good understanding on how the edit page works. So the next thing I recommend to do is to learn all the different shortcuts, or at least the most important ones, to really speed up your editing process. So I encourage you to check out the shortcut template I have made where I have gathered all the best shortcuts and also included a note where I describe the best situation to use the different shortcuts in. So to download this I have included a link in the description and this is totally for free. So once you have it downloaded you can go ahead and print it out and keep it on your desk so you can look at it while you're editing 
I really get the shortcuts into your hands. Or for example you could set it as the background on your phone or just keep it on your PC. And before we go over the export settings we can go ahead and watch through our video and see if we're satisfied with it. So to watch it in full screen you can just press Ctrl F or Command F on a Mac. Or for example if you want to watch the timeline at the same time as watching the video we can go ahead and grab it here with our cursor and just pull down like this and scroll in to zoom in a little bit. And you can also click on this percentage here up in the corner to zoom in another way. So let's go ahead and play through it and see how it turned out. I'm really happy with that, so now let's export this thing out of Resolve. So, to do this we will go from the edit page and over to this rocket here, which is the deliver page. And inside the deliver page you have a viewer here, you have all the clips on this line, you have a timeline at the bottom, and then we have something that looks like the inspector, which is the render settings. So here you will adjust everything on how you want the final product to turn out. And also, if you want to expand this Render Settings tab, you can click on this arrow here. And inside it, you can see we have a bunch of different alternatives to choose from. We even have a own YouTube preset. So this is great if you just want to keep it simple. But I tend to go with this one called Custom, even for my YouTube videos. As here we have full control over how it's going to turn out. So let's go through the Custom one. So, the first thing you will see is the file name, so here you call it what you want it to be named on your computer. And then is the location, which is where you will find this video on your computer after you have exported it. So this is where it will be saved. So go ahead and click on browse, and then select the location you want to find it once it's exported. So a good place is to keep it in the same folder as your video clips which in my case is the exotic film folder. And next you get the question if you want to export it out as a single clip or many individual clips. So if you choose the individual clips, all the different clips in the timeline will like be exported as their own mini film. So we don't want this, we want the whole timeline to be one video. And then we go ahead and choose the single clip. Next is the format, this one we want to set to mp4, which is what our video clips are. And then we only have one alternative on the codec, which is the H.264. We won't, will not check the network optimization. And for resolution, we want the 1920 by 1080 and 29.97 frames per second. So you want this to match the project settings, so if you are using your own clips with a different resolution and frame rate, you want uh, to match this with those. And then is the bitrate, and the bitrate has a lot to do with the quality on our final product. So you could just choose automatic and choose one of these from the drop down menu here. So if you choose the best, you will get the best possible bitrate you can get on your uh, final product. But it will be a fairly large file, and if you're going to export it to something like YouTube, this will be a bit of a overkill. If you're just gonna show it to your friends or family or something, then you will get fantastic quality by choosing the best. So if we stick with the YouTube example, then I want to set the bitrate manually. And then we will go to the restrict to. And here you can write in how many kilobytes per second you want it to be. So if you're gonna upload a video with this resolution and frame rate, so full HD and under 30 frames per second, then the recommendation from YouTube is to go with 8000 kilobytes per second. So if you're working with your own clips which have a different resolution than this or a higher frame rate, you will have to use a higher bitrate as well. 
and I will leave a link in the description to the YouTube's recommendation on the different resolutions and frame rate. But just a quick tip, since YouTube has a pretty high compression rate, a lot of people claim that if you set the bitrate a little bit above what YouTube recommends, then this will help to fight against the compression rate and your YouTube video will look better once it's been uploaded. So for example, since YouTube recommends 8000 kilobytes per second for this resolution and frame rate here, we could go ahead and increase it by 3000 kilobytes, so 11000 kilobytes per second. And then we should get a better looking YouTube video once it's uploaded. But there is a lot of shared opinion around this topic but I tend to just be on the safe side and just go with a bit higher bitrate. Next up, I don't tend to touch this. And on the advanced settings, you want to make sure that you don't have the use optimized media selected or the use render cache. So if you created optimized media, if you were lagging or something, then you would export with using the optimized media instead of exporting with the original video clips. So make sure this one is not checked. And then we're pretty much good to go. You could go over the audio. If it looks like this, you're good to go. So before we hit the add to render queue, you can see here that you can choose between in and out range and entire timeline. I go with the entire timeline and then you will export the whole timeline with your video clips in. So make sure that you don't have a mini clip here that you have forgotten since then you will export your video and also all this dead space plus the video clip here in the end. So make sure that the last clip is the last clip in your main video. So here I'm talking from experience. And once all this is set go ahead and hit add to render queue and it will pop up in this render queue box here. And from here you hit the start render. You see our timeline cursor and video is playing and this is how far we are in the rendering process. And once it's finished you can see this says completed so then you can go ahead and right click on it go to open file location and then we can see it's in the exotic film which is the location we set it to. So here is our final product. So before you start on your next editing project, make sure that you check out the shortcut template. So link to this in the description and it's totally for free. So if you learn the shortcuts included in that template, your editing speed will just go through the roof. So thanks for watching and subscribe if you found this video helpful.